identify this commonly done investigation for the parathyroid. Option A reach technetium 99 molybdenum scan, option B gallium 68 dota nox scan and option C is systemic B scan and option D is PTH venous sampling. Now we have to look into the parathyroid and before we go into the parathyroid we need to know little of embryology, anatomy and basics of parathyroid. Now there are how many parathyroid glands are available. So let us know few important basic points for parathyroid glands. There are two pairs of parathyroid glands, superior pair and the inferior pair, correct? And if you look into the thyroid gland, thyroid gland are of a right lobe and of a left lobe, correct? So this is the left lobe and this is the right lobe, right and the left lobe, see right lobe and the left lobe and this is the superior gland, superior gland develops from fourth pharyngeal pouch, inferior gland develops from third pharyngeal pouch, correct? The blood supply of the parathyroid gland predominantly comes from superior thyroid artery, inferior thyroid artery and artria thyroidema. So these are the basic blood supply to the thyroid gland. So superior thyroid artery, inferior thyroid artery and artria thyroidema from arch of aorta. Now if they ask you the maximum blood supply to parathyroid gland comes from where? The maximum blood supply comes from inferior thyroid artery, remember this, inferior thyroid artery. And uh, if you look into the pathology, pathology is most commonly seen with the inferior gland, okay. And if you look into the ectopic position, this is pathology, number 2 will be ectopic location. The ectopic location is most commonly again seen with the inferior gland, okay. Remember, where all you need to look into the ectopic location? Inferior gland, if it is not a normal location, if the inferior gland not to normal location, you should look into the anterior mediastinum. Where in anterior mediastinum you have to look in thyro thymic ligament. If the superior gland is not a normal location, you should look into the posterior mediastinum, okay. In the posterior mediastinum, where will you look? You will look in the iota pulmonary window. Now, you try to understand the ectopic locations, inferior gland in anterior mediastinum and thyrothermic ligament, superior gland ectopic location most commonly in posterior mediastinum in iota pulmonary window. Is it very clear? Now understand this, any pathology in parathyroid gland is basically out of hyperparathyroidism. Hyper para thyroidism and hyperparathyroidism are basically classified into okay primary primary secondary and basically into tertiary for 
primary the most common cause is parathyroid adenoma followed by hyperplasia. Secondary is because of a end organ resistance and tertiary is untreated secondary goes to tertiary, untreated secondary goes to tertiary, very clear. Now for exam purpose, for examination point of view, for the exam purpose, you should understand most common cause of primary hyperparathyroidism. The most common cause of primary hyperparathyroidism is parathyroid adenoma and this adenoma is also more commonly seen with inferior glands, understood? Now let us all try to understand that pathology how to identify, how to diagnose. Number one way to diagnose is a experienced parathyroid surgeon. experienced parathyroid surgeon doing a neck exploration and looking into the parathyroid glands directly. So experienced parathyroid surgeon after cervical exploration looking into the parathyroid gland directly is the best investigation or the best way to identify parathyroid pathology. It is not an investigation, best way to identify parathyroid pathology. If they ask you as an investigation of choice, then first option go for systemic B spect scan. Next you go for ultrasound guided biopsy and the next you will go for venous sampling. So what you need to understand is system may be technician made in the system may be spect scan. This normal thyroid will take up, understand? Normal thyroid will take up, normal parathyroid will not take up, understand this? Normal parathyroid will not take up. So uptake of technetium 99 is only by adenoma, is only by adenoma, okay? So, if the adenomatous gland is located, yes, in the posterolateral aspect of thyroid, definitely it can be identified. If it is going to be an ectopic location, then you should look into the anterior of the posterior mediastinum. So, this is with respect to system will be scanned with technician 99. Ultrasound guided biopsy, ultrasound can identify the parathyroid pathology and whatever the pathology is available and accordingly, you will do a biopsy and you can identify with an ultrasound. And the last will be the venous sampling. How is this done? From the head and neck veins. What you do is you will inject a radioisotope, okay? That will go and combine with PTH and that will form IPTH. And this IPTH can be measured by venous sampling from head and neck veins. And you can do a test called IRMA, I-R-M-A. This is called immuno radiometric assay. When you do that, you will be able to know the value of IPTH. So these are the ways to locate the pathology in parathyroid. Okay, now we come back to the answer here. So this is a technetium 99 uh, system B spect scan and uh, the answer is that. And here you can see the adenoma, adenomatous tissue in parathyroid. See that? You are able to make out. Okay. You can see here. You can see here. Correct. So this is very, very important question for your exam. Very clear. Now what I can do is I can just quickly uh, get you uh, a view from head to neck, what is the most common presentation? Most common presentation, you just see here, so 
So, what is that you can look into red? The patient, I will just draw this picture. Now, when you could look into the CNS, patient will have headache, memory loss, psychosis and neurosis. Whenever you look into the heart cardiovascular, serious, hypertension and heart block. When you look into the GIT, this is the esophagus, this is the stomach. And this is the pancreas, okay. And in GIT, the patient will have peptic ulcer disease and, and pancreatitis. In kidney, renal, patient will have renal stones, hematuria, And colicky pain. And when you look into the bones, so the patient with bone fractures are more commonly seen, pain, and when you look into the digits. You will classically able to appreciate sub periosteal erosion of corporal bones. Okay. So, we have seen the entire clinical features from head to foot. You can see a CNS headache memory loss, psychosis and neurosis. So, we can write legibly, headache, memory loss, neurosis and psychosis. Serious hypertension and hot block. GIT, peptic ulcer disease and pancreatitis, renal stones, hematuria, colicky pain, bone fractures and subperiosteal erosion of corporal bones. Among all the following, the most common complication, most common complication is renal stones. Stones, bones, abdominal groans and psychic moans. I will repeat, stones, bones, abdominal groans and psychic moans. Very clear? Okay. What will be the metabolic effect? Can you tell me? What will be the metabolic effect in patients with hyperparathyroidism? Metabolic effect with the patients with hyperparathyroidism. 
hypophosphatemic metabolic acidosis. Very clear? So, this is the uh, metabolic abnormality the patient with hyperparathyroidism will have. Very clear?